at this point, I'm going to turn it back to Ron, and it's Ron's birthday today, so but we won't sing him happy birthday until the end, maybe. And then um, he's going to talk about evolution and changes currently happening in deal making. Thanks, Chris. Good information. Um, I, I I really want to see if we can get um, um, 600 people uh, singing me happy birthday. That'd be kind of interesting. Uh, it actually is my birthday today. Uh, but uh, I'm 29. I've been in uh, uh, freight forwarding and uh, custom sales brokerage uh, for the last 29 years. So that's why I got all the gray hair that I do have. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the types of buyers that we um, see in the marketplace. Uh, we bucket them into three individual buckets. Uh, it starts off on strategic buyers and financial buyers, um, but uh, we break that out a little bit more. So uh, what's a strategic buyer? A strategic buyer is an existing company in transportation logistics supply chain that uh, wants to grow uh, through acquisitions. Uh, so that's a strategic buyer. Uh, financial buyers, uh, we divide up into two groups. Um, first, you've heard of PEGs, private equity groups, and the other one uh, is family offices and um, family funds. It's the just nomenclature that people use. Uh, and then the third one is a combination of the two. It's a strategic that has been purchased or invested in by one of those financial sponsors, and um, they are actively growing in the marketplace. So. Um, Chris, uh, Jan had actually mentioned that there were three compelling events that have happened over history that have changed our, you know, industry uh, dramatically. I think there's a fourth, uh, and that's that's really what what determined um, a lot of where the buyer market is today. Uh, that fourth happened uh, in the banking crash of 2007, 2008, when Lehman crashed, and. Uh, prior to that, uh, you had some really, really good, uh, fantastic times in the M&A market. Uh, in 2006, 2007, 2008, it started to crash. Uh, prior to 2008, we had about uh, 670, 700 financial institutions between pegs and uh, family funds um, that were in the marketplace. Uh, most of them agnostic, didn't really care if they were in transportation or logistics or in healthcare or that. Some of them were industry specific. Today, that marketplace looks completely different. It's 10X that. Uh, we have over 6,000 uh, financial sponsors in the marketplace today. Those 6,000 represent multiple different types of funds. Uh, again, they might be family funds, family offices. They might be private equity groups. They might be private equity groups that specialize in a, in a specific uh, marketplace. But because they um, are specific to a marketplace, we see a lot more. We've identified, you know, probably in excess of 200 of those financial sponsors that are interested in, um, you know, either already done a purchase in transportation and logistics or looking at purchases in transportation and logistics. So we think that's that's really changed the marketplace, you know, what happened in 2008. So that's the fourth compelling event. Um, you know, and then um, why would you look at a, at a strategic versus a financial sponsor? Um, strategics have a tremendous amount of cash on their balance sheet. There's estimates that there's over three trillion dollars today sitting on companies' balance sheets um, for the sole, sole purpose of growth uh, that can be used for organic growth or, a, you know, in some instances, a better solution is acquired growth. And you acquire that growth through uh, the purchase of either a bigger company or a smaller company. You know, sometimes there's smaller companies that buy bigger companies. Most of the time, it's a bigger company uh, doing add-ons into smaller companies. When you look at financial sponsors, just in the private equity world today, there's somewhere between $1.5 and $2 trillion worth of what we call dry powder. That dry powder exists for the sole purpose of doing what are called LBOs, leveraged buyouts. And what they want to do is they want to apply a bunch of leverage to buy somebody either as a platform company or as an add-on. And um, they want to maximize their profit. Uh, Chris will talk a little bit about that later, but they want to maximize their profit and how they do that. So one of the ways that they do that is by adding debt. Today's debt markets have dramatically changed from where they were a year ago when you were 
a year ago working with debt, you know, uh, if you b were borrowing money, you were borrowing money very, very, very inexpensively, almost at minimal cost. Uh, today, that has changed. Um, so if you go to, to traditional institutional capital at a bank, you know, it's going to cost you five, six um, percent. Uh, but what has also grown is a lot of the capital that has gone into these financial markets have created what are called uh, debt markets. And these are debt funds that work with private equity and financial sponsors to co-invest in these uh, um, deals that are being put together today. It's, it's an incredible um, way to expand the marketplace and it, it's really helped in our marketplace and our awareness of, of where we're at and what we do. So. It's really helped in the valuations um, up to the past year, but because of the cost of debt today, uh, you're you know probably going to see one to two turns, and that's a multiple. So if you were getting a multiple of eight, that multiple is probably seven or six now because of the cost of the debt. So I'm going to turn it over to Jan now because he's going to talk specifically on what is happening with deal structure today in the marketplace that we see. Jan.